how to attract abundance with meditation technology. We can actually bend reality with our thoughts. Now we have a lot of science to back up the power of intention. How to use your mind to overcome any disease. Use our minds and our intentions to actually change reality itself. Okay, let's talk about the difference between classical and quantum physics. Classical mechanics is a physical theory of deterministic nature and is governed by the principle of causality. Well, quantum mechanics is a physical theory of probabilistic nature that is based on the concept of probability and observation. Okay, a whole bunch of fancy words, as I mean. Classical mechanics, okay, stuff we learn in, in high school that we've learned for the last 300 years, okay? Um, basically, F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration, okay? Determinant deterministic nature means that it's, it's set. You can't change it, all right? You got F, you got M, you get A, you put in force, times mass, acceleration, and you get a result, it's always the same, it doesn't change. You can't change, you can't take energy away from uh, a system. Does it make sense? You can't add energy or take away energy from this uh, uh, from the system. The system is always balance each other out. So that's what I mean by deterministic nature. It's a closed system, okay? And it's governed by the principle of causality, which means if A happens, then B happens. If A didn't happen, then B is never going to happen. So one thing has to cause the other thing to happen. So what's quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is a physical theory of probabilistic nature, which means that a particle is not definite. The particle is just a probability. There's only a chance of it being there. Why is something, why, why is what you're seeing right now, or why is your hand, why can you feel your hand there is, it's not actually 100% there. It's just a probability that it's going to be there. Or if, some, or if it's an electron is in the, in the universe, it doesn't mean it's always there. It's only a probability that's, uh, that's, that's going to be there. Okay, So quantum mechanics is based on probability. That everything in the universe is just a probability. There's no set thing. There's no um, thing that is always going to be the same every time, in every point in time, every point in space. Okay, so that's the difference. The next major difference is the uh, concept of probability and observation. Is, um, there's an experiment, and that's going to lead me to the next thing. Okay, this will explain it better. The double split experiment. What they're doing is they're firing these particles into a sh uh, into a shield, and the shield had two slits on it. I don't want to go into the details of how every thing works. It gets pretty technical, but they're firing these these electrons through these two slit, two, lead, two holes. And then when they shoot into the, and when they're captured on the screen, what you should see is just two lines, right? Because you're shooting these particles through these two holes, you should see two lines. But what happens is that all these other lines show up. Why is that? What, what they saw was they saw a whole bunch of lines instead of just two lines. So basically what happened was that that particle turn into a wave and then it's like a wave like you drop a drop a pebble into the pond it, it makes this wave right like this circle that keeps expanding and then there's many many circles so what happened was that that one particle turned into a wave and then that wave emanated out from the two slits and then when they whenever the waves overlapped each other it created a line so what they showed was that the particle turned into a wave. How can it be possible? I thought, people thought that particles were particles, waves were waves, but that wasn't what happened. They showed that the particle can be both, depending on whether somebody was observing it. Isn't that amazing? The, the mere observation of the experiment was able to turn the, the behavior of the electron. Okay, so that's my crude way of explaining how, how the exper uh, experiment works. The same thing happens when two electrons were once uh, bonded together and resonating together at the same frequency. They separate the two electrons by thousands and millions of miles, uh, thousands of miles, and then they measure the electrons again. And then when they did something to one electron, the ele electron reacted in the same way, where there was nothing connecting them together. Okay? So, Something is called quantum entanglement. Is that once something is entangled together in the quantum realm, okay, outside of our normal dimension, they are they still communicate with each other instantly, not the speed of light, 
not faster than the speed of light, instantly without any lag time in between. Because if you have one electron on one side of the Earth and the other side of the Earth, I think it takes seven seconds for the light to travel from one side of the Earth to the other side. But what they found was that they reacted instantly in synchronicity. Okay, so which shows that there's some way that connects these electrons, some channel that connected them together that we could not perceive and that um, classical physics could not explain. So mind over machine. So there's many, many uh, experiments that have been done based on quantum, on the quantum field. And in the 12-year in the period, there's nearly about 2.5 million experiments done uh, of mind over machine. And it turned out that 52% of the trials were intended in the direction, okay, okay, so here, here's what it is, okay? So people were experimenting with heads or tails. Let's say you flip a coin. Okay, how many percent chance is going to be heads? How many percent chance? 50%, right? How many percent chance is going to be tails? 50% chance, okay? We all know by the mathematical probability, it's always going to be 50-50. So they made a device. Basically, it, it, it turns, uh, it becomes heads or tails. This device, this machine flips, uh, flips a coin or whatever in, in the machine, and then it either shows a green light or a red light. So there's basically two, two ways it can go. So what they did is when they had people just in the room with the device and then they told them, okay, we want you to use your intention to make it heads uh, more than it, its tails. And they did this 2.5 million times over the 12 years with different scientists around the world. They got people to, to look at the machine and just use their intention and say, okay, I want this machine to show heads instead of tails. And then they had a bunch of people say, I want this machine to show tails. What was the... What was the result? It should be 50-50, right? So the result was that actually 51 to 54% was in the favor of the, um, of the uh, machine going in the favor of the, of the person's intention. Let's look at how cells communicate. Jack Benavisti, he's a immunologist and he was he was also doing some water memory experiments and um, the water memory experiments were basically people who filled up uh, something, uh, a jar with a bunch of water and then they put another substance in there. Basically they diluted it to the point where there's nothing left, there's no more substance, it's just 100% water. And when they use that water for um, treating a certain thing, let's say they the the water was going to inhibit um, inhibit some kind of uh, chemical in the body. The, the, the water at the end of the experiment did the same thing as the chemical in the beginning, even though there's no chemical. So basically the water had memory. It remembered that it was used to be, or maybe were mingling with the chemical in the first place, even though all the chemical was taken out. So that's the water, water memory experiment. So Jack Benavisti got um, inspired by this experiment and what he did was he wanted to find out how cells or human cells or any cells in the universe actually communicate with each other and his theory was that molec molecules have a signature frequency every molecule on the planet has a specific frequency and then these frequencies travel in electromagnetic fields and they travel at the speed of light okay so in one second, it's going to travel 380,000 kilometers. In two seconds, it'll be about 700,000 kilometers away from you. So electromagnetic fields travel that fast. Because he's thought, okay, conventional science that it says that our, um, our biology is based on chemistry. Okay? It's a lock and key system. You have one molecule of protein, and if you want to absorb, it has to have a key and lock, and has to collide with the other uh, molecule, and then they have a chemical reaction. Well, the problem with that is it doesn't explain um, how come we experience our emotions so quickly. Okay? Let's say you get anger, you get joy or sadness or fear. That happens almost instantaneously. You can feel it throughout your whole body, right? And that's a chemical reaction. But if, if things had to knock each other and lock together like this, and then we have so many molecules, okay, let's say one protein molecule, for every one protein molecule, there's 10,000 water molecules in our bloodstream. So in order for that one protein molecule to, by chance, connect with another one of our molecules to make a, make a chemical reaction was like having 
a bunch of tennis balls in a swimming pool and hoping one, tennis, one red tennis ball is going to hit one blue tennis ball that you threw into the pool. Okay? So it was very unlikely that that was happening. And even if that happened, it will take a long time for the, for, to, to toss the tennis balls and, and mix it all up together so that these two balls would actually connect. Okay? So something else must, his theory is that something else must be communicating these um, uh, between the cells so that it caused these chemical reactions to happen. And what he found was that he used it, uh, frequencies in the audio range. So 20 to 20,000 hertz. It's the same stuff we use, same frequencies range we use in our cheek holes in our cheek hole app. And what he found was that by using a frequency of the substance, let's say we have a, um, let's say we have a chemical that um, helps you release dopamine, makes you happy, okay? So he recorded the frequency of that chemical. And with just the frequency, he played it to the cells, and the cells responded in the same way as if it received that chemical, even though there's no chemical there, by just using the mere frequency of it. Okay, mind over versus disease and energy healing. So Targ and Sitcher, what they did was they wanted to do an experiment of energy healing, and they assembled all types of healers. And they were, um, and they worked with uh, AIDS patients. They're all double blind, under double blind conditions. All they, all they had was they had the name, the photo of the person, and the T cell counts. And then they distributed these um, these envelopes with the person's name, the photo, and T cell counts. And they gave them to all these healers. And every once a day, they open a, open an envelope, and then they'll have their picture. And then for one hour, uh, they're gonna they have the intention of lowering the T cell counts or raising the T cell counts. I forgot what it was. So every person that uh, was in the experiment, um, that was in the in the treatment group, had a healer heal them or energy heal them for one hour, and then they got healing from every single of the healers. So guess what the result was? And by the way, it, uh, they assembled all kinds of healers. It didn't matter what healer they were using. They had shamans who like did chants and drumming and dancing. They had uh, qigong practitioners like myself. They had uh, just they had Christians and Anglicans who did just prayer. They had people who who did um, some other kinds of energy healing and, and visualization, uh, but it didn't matter. They had all kinds of healers. Forty percent of the people in the control group that didn't get any energy healing died from their AIDS. Hundred percent of the treatment group stayed alive, and not only that. They were much healthier in every way com compared to the people who survived the control group. That was the result. Now, what they did after that is they repeated the studies because they were not happy with the results. They said, let's make it more scientific. So what they did was they did the results again. They um, spread out the, uh, they had more people. They had a bigger group of people. And what they found was the same thing. Significant fewer aids defining illnesses, improved T-cell levels, fewer hospitalizations, fewer visits to the doctor, fewer new illnesses, less severity of disease, better psychological well-being. The differences were decisive. For example, the treatment group had six times fewer aids defining these illnesses and four times fewer hospitalizations at the end of the study than the control. You might be asking, okay, remember this webinar, uh, the title is How to Attract Abundance. That's what the series is about. So you're probably asking, does this work for money. That it's great that you can heal people. It's great that you have scientific research that say that you can make it more heads than tails or more tails than heads. Or you, you have scientific research that you can heal people remotely and all these lecture money fields and all these frequencies. But I'm right now I'm broke and poor and I need money. I have no job. So does it work for money? Well, they actually did a, a, a test experiment of a group of meditators who sought to influence the monetary growth of crude materials price and the misery index. And this was done uh, based on transcendental meditation. There's a lot of scientific research on transcendental meditation. So what they did is like, these group of people, they um, meditated to make the uh, materials price fall, fall, crude material price. Let's say they wanted the oil price to go down. Surprisingly, it went down by 13%. But just think of cheat calls are like, psychic training wheels, right? They're like training wheels for us to enhance our energy, to help us to achieve those levels of, um, high levels of, of brainwaves, high levels of consciousness. 
So until next time, use the chi and prosper.